Our smartphones and tablets are very capable of doing a lot of things, but not only are they capable of doing these such things, but they help us enable to do these things. What I mean by that is, for example, my iPhone is extremely accessibility friendly, and with each software update, they keep adding new accessibility features for people who want to just use their products and, and, and use them like everyone else, but easily for them to be accommodated. iOS 10 is coming out, and I personally don't mind all the new changes and, and updates and little features, but my favorite part of the new software updates is the accessibility features that are included with each big major update. I'm just going to do a quick rundown of all the new accessibility features that are going to be available in iOS 10 day one. My personal favorite is the magnifier, and for people who are visually impaired, this enables them to use a digital magnifier right in their pocket with their iPhone. Previously, I would have to pay like $200, $300 for a digital magnifier with like a LED flash and all those filters that were previously on my CCTV back in elementary school, but now that's all bundled into my phone and that's incredible. For people who live with color blindness and, and can't see specific colors, there's a brand new category in accessibility called display accommodations. Now that's where you're going to find the old grayscale and invert colors, but now you're also going to find color filters and these will enable you to change the hue of any part of the screen. like. You can change it to a, a red tint, a blue tint, purple, like you can customize it to your liking and this tint will follow you in every single app and, and every menu within the operating system. This next feature was available in iOS 9, but I had never even heard about it or used it until an Apple employee basically showed me like, hey, this is a feature, you should try this. And ever since they've done that, I've been just, I can't stop using it. It's called Peak Zoom and it enables you to use 3D touch on an iPhone 6S or later and it enables you to use the 3D touch on the screen, add a little pressure to your push on the control for the zoom and you can get a peak focus and move quickly around the screen faster than you normally would with the zoom controller. So if you currently have an iPhone 6S or later, this feature works right now for you. Another accessibility feature that's been widely known on the Mac OS and, and the iOS side of things is switch control, which allows people with limited mobility to quickly navigate through the operating system with a single input. Switch control is now coming to Apple TV, which is really cool. So if you want to navigate your TV set with just a cursor and or a Siri remote on screen, that's now available. Another new feature coming to Mac OS is called Dwell Control, which allows people with limited mobility to use a separate hardware that would track their head movement or their eye movement and basically allow them to use that as their cursor or, or their custom inputs, which is really cool. And, and it, it's just mind boggling that like people could use their eyes to just track their computer and move around and navigate. Another feature that's going to help people with visual impairments or with dyslexia is speech selection, which is something I use on the regular is enabling itself to read any words or characters that you type out on your keyboard. It can also read out the auto corrections, can read out the predictive words. Hello. How are you? I'm not planning for a week of work. And it's just, it's fantastic whenever I'm trying to like, and I might think it's one thing, but then when my phone reads it back to me and it's something else just because my eyes aren't seeing it correctly, that just enables me to quickly delete it or, or keep it if I, you know, feeling confident that that's the word I wanted. For blind and visually impaired users of the Apple Watch, you can now actually get haptic feedback to check the time through voiceover, where it'll just tap you and, and you can figure out the time that way. It's pretty discreet, which is pretty nice, and it's not gonna sit there and just kind of mumble the time out loud. And for Apple Watch owners that use a wheelchair, now you can actually set it to let the watch know that you happen to use a wheelchair for mobility and it will change the words like uh, time to stand to time to roll. It changes the software tracking as well for fitness to be appropriate to for those who are in a wheelchair. Something I just started learning about which is TTY hardware for the deaf and hard of hearing is now coming to iOS without any additional hardware needed to communicate with people who have no TTY hardware on their, on their phone number. This is really cool. It doesn't require any additional hardware. It can place calls to non-TTY numbers through your carrier. And it works with legacy TTY hardware as well. And, and the app also has a TTY 
specific quick type predictions. So if your device supports iOS 10, I highly recommend you update because the accessibility category of your settings app is going to be so fresh with tons of new features. Same thing with the watch OS 3, with Mac OS Syria, and tvOS. Just update all of them and get your new accessibility features and hopefully you'll find something that will help you use your device. So be sure to download iOS 10. It's gonna be available September 13th. It's a free update that you can download straight from your device settings or you can do it right from iTunes.